Yeah, sometimes in a game, it's a difference. Obviously, we've seen it so many times of winning and losing the game, making and missing your free throws. And um, those guys made their free throws, big free throws. So are you, I can't tell if you're happy or are you upset? Oh, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Uh, we won. I'm happy about that. Another great win. Coach, kind of explain that first half. You guys play with a lot of great energy, and you only had two turnovers in the first half. Man, guys were together. You know, they were connected and wanting to win the game. Obviously, um, you know, Cincinnati is a really good team. They can score. And uh, they made adjustments and they made shots. That's what they are. Betty, you talk about teaching tape a lot. I know you're happy with the results overall. Um, the last couple of minutes, I imagine that's going to be good teaching tape on how to close the game out a little bit easier going forward. Yeah, well, I mean, from, from what I've always known, when the opposing team makes a run late, if you don't handle that properly, then the pressure becomes much more on you. And then you start to fold, and they just have nothing to lose. And I've seen that from us a couple of times this year. Uh, and it happened again today. And we have to learn from those situations. But it's, it's all self-inflicting things that we can control. And, um, you know, we're just going to have to watch the film and, and get back to uh, and doing the things that we need to do. This, this could be it for Cincinnati for a while. Is it so, sort of odd to see – well, nice to send them off with an L, I guess. Um, <laughs> but is it sort of odd to think this could be the end of this? Uh, it is kind of odd because, you know, they've been in my career, obviously as a player and now a coach forever. And to not, to not have that there uh, would be really weird. Uh, Penny, with the uh... – Kind of piggybacking off that with the uh, – this being might be the last game against Cincinnati for a while. Um, how would you think the crowd, especially the student section, second game with the new rules and stuff with the student section, how do you think they played into the game, especially in the first half? They did a phenomenal job. The last couple games with the student section showing up, along with the crowd that's usually here, man, it was really loud. And when we made those runs, you know, they were there for us and they were like that sixth man for us out there. And – um I'm enjoying every moment of it, uh, you know, having an advantage at home, and that's what it's about. They gave us the advantage at home again today. Thoughts on DeAndre's game? Big block at the end there, and DeAndre generally. Yeah, DeAndre had another good game. Um, again, didn't get many shots in the second half, and the shots he got weren't really great shots. I want, some, I want him to play with freedom, and, um, you know, he's not – and not be tight. And, you know, another 21-point game um, – you know, his three-pointer wasn't falling today, and he didn't shoot any free throws. So, you know, with him playing um, this type of game to get us a win, I was happy to see that. Hey, Coach, uh, over here to the right. Um, I know you not don't look at this until probably the end of the season, but this is your fifth straight year, 20 wins. And, you know, how much pride are you taking that? I know it's all about the team and getting forward. I know you focus on the postseason. But do you get a chance to reflect back on – your accomplishments here so far? Not really, because I'm always trying to push for the, for the NCAA. And because I have that mindset, I don't really ever take in what I'm doing individually. You know, I thank God for that, obviously. But it's been the players that have played for me that have gotten me there. And again, this year, I thank all the players that have played for me that have helped me help, you know, carry over what I teach and that turn into wins. So I'm happy about that for sure. And on the first half, you play, play one of your best first half. I think you only had one turnover late in the first half, and that helped you build a foundation to hold on to the win. What did you do in the first half to not have those turnovers? Yeah, we, we, were, um, we were just playing freely, and uh, KD kind of controlled the flow. Alo controlled the flow. We got high percentage shots, and uh, we didn't take a lot of chances. The only chances that we did take, we had two turnovers. I think both of those were Eli in the first half. And uh, he was just trying to be Eli. We let him have the opportunity to get downhill on bigs. And, you know, um, he did that. So, you know, for us, it was a, um, a monster, monster game because that's how we went. That's how we approached it. We didn't finish it the way we wanted to, but we started it the way we wanted to. You mentioned the NCAA tournament. Do you, you know, you got two games left in the regular season. You got the conference tournament still left. Um, you feel like you've done enough? Absolutely. Can. I mean, we're not going to ever be content, but our, our resume is good enough to be in. I mean, I'm looking around the country, and, uh, 
you know, I, I feel like from what we've done, it's not even close. With uh, Keontae going down, um, you knew you were going to have to get um, better performances from some of the guys off the bench. And talk about what the contributions that uh, Jonathan and uh, DeMari have brought since uh, Keontae's gone out. Yeah, those two guys are hungry because they've been working really hard on their games. You know, we do the developmental part of our of our uh, practices, and those guys are really getting better. And then they're carrying over into the games from the defensive end to the offensive end. So proud of both of them. They're, they were ready for their moment. Obviously, it hurts not having Keontae because he was our pretty much our best three-point shooter and shooting the ball well. He had the most makes. And uh, these guys are stepping up, though. Coach, with this uh, being one more home game coming up, what does the senior class mean to you in the program? Well, it's, it's weird because all these seniors, I haven't really <laughs> had an opportunity to get to know personally on like a personal level. Like, you know, Alo isn't walking. Um, I think Malcolm is. I think Malcolm pretty much is the only one out of the group besides DeAndre that I really know. So it's kind of weird, but I've, I've grown to know these guys and to have these good good people first and then good athletes and good basketball players, good students. That's That really matters, and I'm glad that I have these guys and being able to coach these guys this year. And senior day will be special. I saw Alex um... – Go to the tunnel with Daryl with the pad on, came back, and then looked like the last time he checked out, he was grabbing the groin once again. Did he re-aggravate it all? Uh, he might have a little bit because I wanted to keep him out and then put him back in that last the last few seconds, and he probably had to overexert himself playing someone off the dribble or just chasing him and probably tweaked it a little bit. I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because he wasn't in a bad mood after the game, so that lets me know he's okay. Penny, I'm not sure if you answered this before I got to the room, but um, you just said that the second half, obviously, y'all didn't close the way you would like to. Uh, several things there, but what stands out to you the most in terms of what was different in the final 20 minutes? Um, I mean, they – we didn't execute offensively. It was more one-on-one. -on -one. And when we go one-on-one, -on -one, we got to really lean on one or two guys instead of getting some, some, some action, some motion, ball moving from side to side and really believing in that. And we have good athletes that believe in their games. And for the most part, we allow them to play their games, but it has to be a cutoff at some point when the team is going on a run for us to get something with some movement. And we just were, too, we were stagnant in the second half, and that's when we are playing bad basketball. And then on the other end, we weren't rebounding. You know, we got out-rebounded today because we just weren't boxing out. And it usually is in the last five minutes when teams are missing shots and they're getting desperate and we're not boxing out. That's the time we're supposed to be more locked in. In a way, is it kind of nice to have stuff like this to still be coaching this late in the season to still, you know, have stuff to 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 improve upon or or not like that? Yeah, no. I mean, you don't. I mean, we're not peaked at our peak. You know, we're not at a point where we're like we're at our ceiling. We have so much room to grow. So that is something that if we can grasp it and get it, that we can get better. And I think I love that part. We're not playing bad basketball. We're just not putting two halves together the way the good teams around the country are. You're going to have some mistakes here and there, but they start to compile, and then we give teams runs, 10-0 runs or whatever, and then we're, we're back in a dogfight when we had a game where we could have pushed away. And those are the things that we have to learn to get better at. Have you coached a player that could seemingly just flip the switch from the first half to the second the way Kendrick can basically every night? No, I've, I've, never, I've never coached a guy that could do it that way. I mean, he's a machine. He knows he's a closer. And when the game gets close, he knows how to, you know, do what he needs to do. And he's done that this year. He's done that his, his entire career. That's why he's actually the leading scorer in our conference because he knows how to do that.